Well, good morning, everyone. Great to see you this morning in the house of the Lord. Uh, welcome to Poovy's Chapel. We want to give God thanksgiving for another day uh, that he's given us to worship together, to praise him. Uh, we want to thank him for being so good. If God's been good to you, would you say amen? Amen. Thank you so much uh, for gathering together uh, to honor the Lord and uh, uh, thank you. And we want to welcome all of our online audience and also everyone outside. We want to thank you uh, for being here today as we gather to hear from the Lord, uh, gather to worship Him and give Him praise and thanksgiving uh, for all that God has done in our life and what He is doing. Uh, I want to thank Him that He's a God who knows what we need today. Amen. Uh, and He knows how to speak to us and we want to praise Him uh, and give the Lord thanksgiving for all of His wonderful uh, blessings in our life. Thank him for being so good to us. Uh, as you uh, can see in our announcements, there's a lot of uh, things that are, are happening or starting to happen uh, here at Poovy's Chapel. So please uh, look at, uh, take your app. Uh, in your app, there is also a bulletin you can have every single week. So please uh, remember that and uh, take time to look at all the opportunities that we have to serve uh, the Lord and to serve others uh, here at Poovy's Chapel. And also uh, remember we are uh, doing a back-to-school blessing on August the 13th uh, so please remember that uh, every week we are collecting items for that uh, that is found in your bulletin or uh, in the announcements so please remember uh, that and uh, let's continue to pray as we reach out in our community uh, and try to be a blessing and a help to others uh, and to let the name of the Lord be lifted up uh, his name be praised uh, and thank him for those opportunities God gives us to uh, know him uh, to worship him and to honor the Lord I want to ask you to stand together if you're physically able all over the building uh, this morning uh, as we uh, uh, go to the Lord in prayer and uh, give God thanksgiving for all of his wonderful uh, love and his grace uh, this morning, his blessings, a uh, lot of uh, uh, opportunities to pray. Uh, let's remember uh, Jennifer Dula's uh, mother in prayer. Uh, she fell on Wednesday night while we were here uh, at church and uh, uh, broke her hip, and so she's had hip uh, surgery. Uh, she is in the hospital uh, at this time still yet uh, and uh, on a ventilator, so we want to pray. Uh, they're going to be uh, trying to remove the ventilator today, uh, so please remember her in prayer. Uh, Lord, just touch her and lift her up. Also remember Kia Elders. She'll be having pr uh, surgery tomorrow uh, at, uh, I believe, at Winston, so please pray for her. Uh, it's about an eight-hour surgery, uh, so please remember her and uh, Brother Jerry in prayer. Uh, Lord, just encourage them and lift them up. Also remember uh, Elaine Reed. Uh, pray for her as she goes through treatments, and remember... Uh, Larry's story also be having a uh, surgery so pray for him uh, Lord just uh, uh, touch him and also remember Justin Bass in prayer uh, for, for continued healing uh, the Lord just give him strength and grace uh, and then also remember uh, uh, the Arise Youth Conference that begins tomorrow uh, we have our youth that will be leaving in the morning so please uh, remember all them in prayer and uh, let's ask God's anointing upon them and the Lord just to touch uh, this whole entire week I want to challenge you this week uh, to a prayer to pray for the Arise Conference, uh, that God will bless it and anoint it. Uh, there'll be uh, th uh, several thousand youth that'll be gathered uh, in Pigeon Forge for the uh, conference. And uh, I want to ask you to do, uh, do all of our youth a favor, uh, do all of our leaders a favor, and I want to ask you every single day this week uh, to pray for them. Uh, at least just five minutes a day, pray for the Arise Conference. Just say, God, I want to ask you to bless all the speakers and the singers, and most of all, uh, uh, just touch hearts because guess what God is still in control there's still hope uh, for our uh, for this generation that we're living in right now uh, and it comes from a uh, from the touch of God and the blessings of God and so I want to ask you to pray every single day uh, and uh, I know we have uh, we have several youth that are going I think there's about 40 people that are going from here at our church so we want to pray for them that the Lord will bless them and anoint them and uh, his will be done so at this time uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer uh, and maybe this morning you have a special need or object on your heart or somebody on your heart uh, let's let we want to pray for that and ask God's will to be done in and through it so if you do would you just slip your hand up this morning to the Lord uh, as we're trusting God for every single need how many of you know he's able to meet every need amen and uh, we praise him and thank him for it let's pray together Heavenly Father God we worship you and we give you praise Lord God for the privilege just to know you and to call upon your wonderful name Lord you are so good and God we want to thank you for your goodness God thank you for the grace of God thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed 
shed so that we can be saved and know you and call upon your name. And Lord, this morning, how God we come in faith believing, how God we come, God, to you, how Lord, recognizing you know exactly what we need, even how before we ask. And we want to praise you for that, God. Thank you how for the opportunity you give us to believe and to trust in you. And Heavenly Father, we just pray, God, for every single one of these needs. God, we pray how for Jennifer's mother this morning. You would bless her. How God, I pray you would bless her with healing, bless her with strength. And God, I pray, Lord, you would surround all of them with peace, Lord, uh, that passes all understanding, God. Uh, Lord, I pray for Kia tomorrow as she goes uh, for her surgery. We pray, God, for an anointing upon them uh, that are doing the surgery, Lord. I pray, God, you would guide their hands. Uh, we pray for healing and strength in her. God, we pray for Elaine today, God, that you just bring uh, the healing that she needs, God, and Justin. Uh, we pray for him, Lord, that you just touch him and uh, continue to work in him, bring healing to his body. Father, we pray for Larry as he goes for surgery, Lord, that you would just bless him. Uh, God, I pray we we'll just touch him, Father. I pray, God, that you just bring him uh, not only through the surgery, Lord, but we pray for speedy recovery uh, in his life. And Father, uh, we just ask you right now, God, for every hand that's been lifted, Lord, that you, uh, God, would just send a special anointing, uh, God, even right now in this hour, uh, God, upon every single heart and life. And Lord, that you would bring life, uh, Lord, to every single uh, need that has been presented in our hearts and lives. And Father, uh, God, we pray for all of our missionaries, Lord, you have bless them, our churches throughout our community in this county, in this country. Uh, God, and around the world today, Father. Oh, God, may we be a burning light uh, of hope to those who are lost and those who are living in darkness. We just ask you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you'll be lifted up. Father, we pray for the Arise Conference. You are blessed. We pray for an anointing up on it, God. Lord, I praise you, oh, Lord, that you know exactly what we need. But, Lord, this morning we are here to worship you. God, we're here to honor you. We're here to lift you up. God, we're here to give you praise. And we're here to ask, God, that your will be done in and through our lives. Thank you for the word of God this morning. Thank you for the witness of the Holy Ghost. And God, I pray you'd help us all to respond to you. We give you praise. We give you honor and glory for your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. How many of you glad today he's alive and well? Would you say amen? Amen. amen. Let's sing together for the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah.
be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and their children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you Y'all may be seated. Pray for us as we sing.
Aren't you glad he's alive this morning? Amen. this morning for being so good to me. I just want to thank him for saving me. And I just want to say this morning that Jesus is my king. And I'm thankful he didn't choose to come into this world and be known for his riches and his fame. He chose to come in love and mercy and grace for our lives. Because of him, I'm redeemed this morning. And I thank him for being that sacrifice for my sins on the cross this morning. I just want to say he's good and he's worthy. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I praise his holy name this morning. Y'all just pray for me as I sing.
by mercy. My King is known by grace. For the hope in His name and the power that saves. My King is known by the cross. My King is known by an empty grave and in all that He does. My King is known by His Aren't you glad for the love of Jesus this morning? Amen. I'm glad the Bible tells us and lets us know uh, that it's by his uh, grace and by his love uh, that we are changed. And I thank him for the blood that changes our life uh, forever. Uh, the Bible says this in the book of John chapter 3 and verse number 16. Uh, if you know this scripture, say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Uh, that is the true love of God. God, and we want to praise him for his love this morning and uh, thank him for his wonderful, wonderful grace. I want to invite you to take your Bibles and turn uh, with me, if you will, to the book of Ephesians, uh, and please leave your Bibles open. Uh, if you are looking at our app, uh, you have uh, some of the scripture that are there, but most of it's just going to be references this morning, uh, and uh, so uh, please uh, take time to uh, look at your word uh, and follow along this morning. We're going to be looking in, at some different uh, 
scriptures that show to us uh, the times we are living in and what God has prepared. While you are turning to Ephesians chapter number two, I want to uh, uh, give you an opportunity uh, that'll be that one of the greatest things you can ever do in your life, uh, and that is uh, the Trinity Bible Institute. We're going to be doing it every Tuesday night. Uh, it'll begin at the first of September uh, and in the first week of September and go uh, first semester goes through November uh, right before uh, Thanksgiving and then our second semester will begin at the end of January and go all the way to the end of April or the first week of May uh, you have that opportunity it's right here at church uh, it is every Tuesday it's one night a week uh, the homework is uh, is very uh, very simple it comes straight from the class and straight from the Bible uh, and it is uh, it is awesome it'll encourage you uh, it is very inexpensive and if uh, you financially you say I need some help if you will let us know we, we can uh, we can help you with that uh, and so we want everybody to be a part of it uh, we want so many that we just have to have it in here amen uh, it'll be a blessing to you we're going to begin in the Old Testament uh, there's information out on our welcome center uh, but if some of our uh, inst- if some of our uh, students will go out there right after service uh, and just take some of those hand them out have them at the door uh, for your information I want to promise you 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 will be blessed uh, if you're in the uh, if you're in the Bible Institute and you've been blessed would you say amen, amen. and so uh, there's uh, we have been really uh, uh, blessed uh, you said I just want to know more about the Bible it's not for it's not just for preachers or teachers or missionaries or evangelists or prayer warriors or whoever it is for anybody uh, you say they don't I, I got friends that don't even know Jesus it is for them everybody needs the word amen uh, and that's what we're going to look at in Ephesians chapter number two and we're going to begin in verse uh, number 19 we're talking about looking at our foundation I want you to look at it in Ephesians 2 and verse number 19. Uh, He says in verse number 19, Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation. If you're on the foundation this morning, would you say amen? He said, on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. And then in verse number 22, he brings it very personal in our life of where we are to be, in whom ye also are builded together. So he said, you get on the foundation by trusting Christ, then after you trust Christ, it is his body uh, that we are built together and only ourselves have come uh, in that place to where we have life but he said together now you are the body of Christ upon this earth you are the church uh, that is built together he said and you also are built together for a habitat and habitation of God through the spirit so why are we together why did God save us he saved us to be a habitation of God we are the place where God dwells if you're a believer this morning would you say praise the Lord the greatest miracle in the world is trusting in Jesus, Savior, and Lord. Uh, not only can he heal our bodies uh, as the Savior and doing miracles, but number one, he forgives our sin. Something no one, the Bible says, uh, can do outside of Jesus is to forgive our sin. I'm glad this morning to be forgiven, amen? And so he has saved us to be his tabernacle, to be his temple, the place where he dwells now and so when we think about a a foundation the beginning can only begin with the foundation we've been looking at the foundation what it means what it is the foundation determines the stability and the usability of a building of a structure the word foundation means to put down it is a substructure it is something that is built to hold up what is going to be on it it is to commit to conceive to give to make to purpose to put to settle to ordain how you say preacher why in the world do we have to learn about a foundation Every single week. Look at somebody and say, every week. 
Because if we don't have the right foundation, we are going to fall and we are going to sink. And he said, it, it lets us know that the word foundation used in the Bible, it is in an active meaning, uh, simply meaning it never stops. It is always uh, there. It is always present and it is always working. And so we're watching as God says in Ephesians, he's talking to this church at Ephesus that has uh, come out of idolatry and out of idol worship in their lives and now they've been born again and he said look you have a foundation that will never fail who is Christ himself matter of fact our world is built upon a foundation he says it like this in the book of 2 Samuel, uh, chapter number 22 and verse number 16. He's talking about in the waters. He said the channels uh, dry up and we see the foundation of the world and are discovered. So what kind of foundation does our world have? It's an amazing foundation. It is not the ground that we have. It is the word that was spoken. There's no one. I have watched and seen some of these uh, NASA pictures come back. Did you know there's nobody out there in space holding this thing up? Did you know you are living on a world that is spinning in outer space? It has no strings attached to it. There's no cables like a zip line. Amen. There's nothing holding this up but the Word of God. And so the foundation of our world is God's Word. He created it. And in our lives, I want to tell you, there's a foundation we must have. There's all kind of ideas. There's all kind of religions. There's all kind of things in our life, ideologies and traditions that we have. But if it is not the Word, it is not a foundation that will stand. And so we have a foundation that is happening. We've looked at all different things about our foundation. The Bible says it like this in 2 Timothy 2 and verse number 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. We may have fought in our lives and we have watched our society uh, stand up on the foundation of a country uh, that uh, we, we read about and studied about uh, on, uh, on July the 4th about the foundation of it. But we have watched those things like sinking sand begin to deteriorate. How uh, the laws of men can and will change and deteriorate. But there's a foundation that will never move and his name is Jesus. Amen. So we're looking at the foundation. We've looked at all of, of what the Word says about who God is, about who Jesus is, about the Holy Spirit. We've looked at salvation, at baptism, so many at once. So if you've missed any of those, they are all live on our website and also on uh, YouTube. And they're on uh, Facebook and they're on an app and they're there. Look at somebody and say they're there. Amen. We're going to look this morning and continue thinking about where we are in this time. I want to ask you something. As you are watching our world today and you're seeing all of these things that are happening, I want to ask you something. What will happen? Take your Bibles and go with me, if you will, back to the book of Matthew, chapter number 24. Uh, the book of Matthew, chapter number 24. And please uh, keep your Bible open, whether it's going to be uh, your, on your phone or wherever it is. Uh, keep your Bible app open. Uh, we're going to look at some of these scriptures. And uh, we're going to look at Matthew, chapter number 24. So we looked last week at where is he? If Jesus is coming, then why has he not come? How many of you would like to be in heaven today? Would you say amen? amen. Wow. I want to tell you, it would change every, just to be in the presence of the Savior, to be out of this old wicked world. Friend, our world is wicked, amen? amen. But I want to tell you, there is, uh, there is coming a day that Jesus promised he is coming again. But what is going to happen to lead us up to that day, all these events that he spoke of. We're going to look in Matthew chapter number 24 and verse number 6. I want you to look at it with me. Matthew 24 and verse number 6. The Bible says, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Have we heard that? How many have heard that all of your life? You've heard of wars and, man, rumors of wars all of our life. But I want to tell you, it is prevailing greater than we have ever known as countries are preparing men and women for war. Uh, I'm talking about an all-out war uh, that we're going to see happen in this world. It is happening 
today. I want you to look in verse number six. He said, and you said, see that you be not troubled. You got to understand what God is doing in his word. He is continuing to help his people. He takes his word. He gives us comfort in the word of God. Would you say amen right there? I want to tell you God's word will comfort you. He said, when you see these things happening, he said, don't be troubled. Don't be so disturbed and don't let it take away your joy and your peace. You are the hope uh, that our world has. If you're a born again believer, I want to tell you, you have hope in your life of knowing Jesus and trusting him and living every day in the joy of who Jesus is. Uh, But I want to tell you, our world needs to know that Jesus. Amen. And here we are. He said, be not troubled. Then uh, you look in verse number six again. He said, for all these things, what's the next four words? Must come to what? Pass. What is going to happen? He said, but the end is not yet. Just because we have heard of wars Just because we've heard of wars and rumors of wars and all these things that can take place doesn't mean that it's time yet. So what in the world is going to have to happen? What what event? I'm going to ask this as an open question, but we're going to answer rapidly. What event needs to take place for Jesus to return? Anybody? It's exactly right. Nothing has to happen because the return of Jesus is imminent. It is going to just happen. You say, yeah, but we're here on the Bible prophecy. Jesus said, you don't know the day nor the hour. But there is a plan from God, and he said, I want you to know some things that are going to be taking place when it happens. So uh, what will happen? He lets us know something in uh, Scripture all the way back uh, as you go all the way from the beginning. Uh, there was a pre-existing plan before God ever said, let there be light. He already knew he was going to call his children home one day. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you, God, I did not just think, oh, yeah, I need to go get them. How many of you have ever heard of a man by the name of Noah? Somebody tell me what Noah built. An ark. And so Noah built an ark. What in the world did God, and was God thinking, asking Noah to build an ark when it had never even rained? He knew what was about to happen. God had a pre-existing plan about the coming of Christ. And everywhere you go uh, in the scripture, it is pointing to Jesus coming. Uh, There was a man by the name of Enoch. Uh, The Bible said that Enoch walked with God. It is all the way back in the generations in the book of of Genesis as the world began. The Bible says you flip over to the book of Jude, uh, which is the next to the last book of the Bible, that Enoch himself was preaching the coming of Christ the end of the world and that Jesus was coming again I want to tell you something he's coming again it was a pre-existing plan everything God has done from the beginning in the book of Genesis leads us up to the coming of the Savior Then I want you to take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Daniel, chapter number 2. Daniel in the Old Testament, uh, you get in the book of Isaiah, uh, and then you just keep turning toward the New Testament, you'll find the book of Daniel. I want you to look at Daniel chapter number 2 with me uh, this morning. Again, I ask you to keep your Bibles open because we need to know and understand what our foundation is. Why do we believe that Jesus is coming? Oh, because we sing about it at church. Y'all know that song, I'll fly away anybody ever heard the song I'll fly away oh yeah that tells me I'm gonna fly away when I was a kid and we were singing I'll fly away y'all know how we're thinking about we're gonna fly away don't you we are going to leave this world Jesus said it's going to happen in such a a an instant that our that those around us are not even going to realize what has happened when you look at Daniel chapter number two and verse uh, number 45 with me if you will uh, we understand that the Bible lets us know there's things going to come to pass the book of Daniel is a prophetic book with actions and things that were taking place in that day and also point to the things of the end 
time. I want you to look at Daniel chapter number 2. We're going to read verse number 45. Again, this is just kind of pulling some verses out in the middle of what is, what is being said in the book of Daniel to give us some idea of what's going to happen. He said in verse, in verse, number, uh, verse number 45, For as much as thou sawest, uh, the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. I want to tell you, all of those represent time periods uh, that, are, that are, are happening or have happened on this earth. The great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. So he's beginning to let us know in the book of Daniel that the things that are going to be written, some of the things as you walk through the book of Daniel, how many have heard of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? If you have, would you say amen? How many of you know that they were called to bow down and worship an idol every body was called to worship this idol if you did not worship it what was going to happen to you you are going to die it is a picture of the coming of what is going to happen in the time of tribulation how when you when you have the mark of the beast or you do not have the mark of the beast and so in chapter number two he said i want to let you know there's some things that are going to happen after these things must come to pass and then it's going to happen after this and he said the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof is sure and so daniel i was one who heard God and knew what God said he said I want you to know that there is a plan from God it is not just something God said hey I think I'm going to go and I'm what we call the rapture or I'm going to just call all my people out of this world uh, one day it has been planned before light ever hit into space in this world I was asked this uh, this week how old is Jesus can anybody tell me how old Jesus is He's ageless. He's eternal. I want to tell you before there was light in this world, there was a Savior on the throne. He is eternal. And God himself has given us the plan for what is about to happen. Remember, Matthew chapter number 24 and verse number 6, he tells us all these things. And he says, these things must come to pass. We're going to look at some things that must come to pass. I want you to understand something that is happening in our world. First of all, our world itself is predicting the end. They are saying, I want you to know something. There's going to be an end to this world. We, have un we understand that uh, this morning from many different sources. Are you all ready for this? Are you all ready? Would you say Amen. Our world is predicting that the world itself is going to be gone. That humanity will be no longer on this earth. These are not Bible scholars. These are, uh, these are not people that are, are following any kind of religious uh, thought, if you will. Uh, here are some quotes that are happening about our world that we're living in this morning. If you are living in this world today, would you say Amen. If you're sitting on a pew or sitting on a couch or driving down the road, I'd say amen. We are here in this world and they are already predicting from our world standpoint uh, that our world is going to be over. Here it is. And they even give dates of when it will be over. Human civilization as we know it. They're saying that we have already entered into its last decades. That we are on, that this is all uh, recent from those who are looking at our world. H Harry uh, Cockburn said this. He said, the high likelihood of human civilization is coming to an end by 2050. Can somebody tell me how far that is away? 29 years from today. So some of you, that magic number of 29, y'all get that, don't you? Said in 29 years, the way our world is going, there's going to be no more humans upon our world. 
They are predicting uh, that life itself is going to be over. We have entered into our last decades. This is not Bible scholars. This is not uh, people that are trying to make some money. Uh, like in 1988, the world's going to end. Y'all remember that? How many of you still got that little book about the world's going to end in September of 1988? We had that little book going around. These are none of that. Civilization as we know it, they're saying, is going to end by 2050. They're saying climate change is going to cause our world to be over and all humans to die. They are saying in our world right now, they're saying that we do not have enough food to feed everybody in the world. We're going to starve to death. Since a few years back, Several administrations ago, they began to proclaim that there's too many people on earth. Started by Bill Gates himself as a foundation to control the population of the earth. And we are listening to that nut. I'm telling you, friend, we are watching a world. We are understanding a world that understands itself that things are happening and they are saying from a world's perspective that this world is about to be over. So let's just take a for instance. How many of you know how fast two years go by? It's 24 months. You are one day you're eating ice cream. You're thinking everything is, uh, wow, man, I'm doing good. The next thing you know, you are 94 years old. It goes fast. So let's just take, for instance, if in two years Jesus came, sucked out all the people that are saved from this world. It's going to be like a vacuum cleaner. It's going to be, and you're home, amen? All that takes place, then starts the tribulation, which is seven years. Year. So you would be looking from here nine years before everything would be over. Well, did you know in the book, in the book, in the time of tribulation, we will look at a little later that there's going to be one third of the population gone. That there's going to, I'm talking about where they all these things begin to take place. Their population is going to get less and less on this earth. Wow, they said they are saying in our world, I want you to know the world is about to end. They're sending up red flags everywhere saying our world is about to end. They are telling people, I want you to know our world is about to end. Using a battery instead of a fuel is not going to keep it from ending. I want to tell you our world that knows that something is happening. By the way, I can back all of that up by Scripture. We're going to go to in the book of Romans in just a little bit. Uh, maybe if you're here for, till, we're probably going to be here to about five. Is that all good with everybody? Amen. I want to let you know that there's things that are happening. I want you to go with me over in the book of Daniel, same book you're in. Daniel chapter number 11 and verse number 45. Our world is proclaiming it is almost over. I'm not talking about Christian people. I'm not talking about people with a sign around their neck saying, hey, you need to repent and you better get right with God because our world's about over. I want to tell you that should be all of our cry and all of our call to our world because the world itself even knows it's about over. Look with me in the book of Daniel chapter number 11 and verse number 45. They are looking at and wondering about there's going to be a place of worship. A place that is a t a defined in the scripture. Daniel chapter 11 and verse number 45 says it like this. And he, shall, uh, and he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. I want to ask you a question if you have read the Bible and you read how, what God is doing in a certain place in Israel where is this holy mountain where's the holy mountain where's the holy city Jerusalem he said I want you to know in my holy mountain some things are going to take place he said that yet you shall come to this end and none shall help him when you come I know we are just pulling out some little excerpts here and there in the book of Daniel but I want you to know something about this worship 
place, this place in Israel that is important not only to the history of Christianity and the history of, our, of the Jew and the Jewish culture. I'm going to tell you it is a biblical thing that is happening. You understand that Israel has been in a struggle ever since God put them together. Because the world wants what they have. Israel, it, the whole country is not as big as the state of North Carolina. You got to think about it, it is a small area. And in that small area, why in the world does every, almost every news conference, why in the world is there a targets pointed to this little place called Israel? I want to let you know why. Uh, because Israel is the place that God chose uh, for the prophecy for his people and also to allow the word of God to go forth. I want to let you understand something in the world we're living. Satan is in an all-out attack. Satan is attacking people's minds, their hearts, our world. You say, why? Because he understands this is his last lap. That he is about over and he, what he is doing is trying to cause all this turmoil. But in that, the Bible said the kings of the north are coming to establish worship in this little place of Jerusalem. You say, preacher, what in the world does that mean? Well, let me give you a little idea just of the country of Turkey. Anybody ever heard of Turkey before? There's a lot of biblical things that happen in the lands of Turkey, uh, but in the lands of Turkey, it is Islam. Uh, they, are, uh, they are a Muslim presence and a Muslim country, and they are, here's what they are doing at this time. Who does Israel, ever since Abraham, all the way back, uh, that war has been going on. They are fighting for and coming to uh, Jerusalem to establish a place of worship just like God said would happen in the end day. How many have ever seen this building in a picture somewhere? This one right here of the Dome of the Rock. Y'all seen that before? If you've seen it, would you raise your hand? That is not a Christian place. That is not even a Jewish place. That is where the Muslims go in to worship. I want to let you know something. God set it up many years ago in a way that all of these things that are in the Bible are taking place or have taken place for the coming of our Savior. Turkey's prime minister had recently stressed that Jerusalem belongs to the Muslims and not to the Jews. They know no mercy when they go after what they feel like they are supposed to have. Our world, friend, is in a place there's going to be chaos. That struggle in Israel is real. Their worship wars. I'm not talking about the songs that are being sung or the style of worship they have. I'm talking about God and his people and Satan is attacking what God has Set up. There's a place, there's a worship place. How many of you know that not too many years ago, very recently, that all of a sudden, out of nowhere, uh, the U.S. Embassy is established in Jerusalem? If you heard about that, would you raise your hand? It was like, boom, we're going to do it. Here it is. It's been promised since the 1970s. We've never done it. We, we have done it. You know what? why the world got so tore up? It's because somebody is stepping in the territory uh, that these Muslims are wanting to overtake. And when they do, I, I want to let you know something. It is going Going, these things are going to take place. And when they take place, Jesus said, I want, in the time of tribulation, friend, I want to let you know all these things are going to be going on. So what is happening in the world? God gives a foundation of his word, and he said these things are going to come to pass. Just know they're going to happen. You can see them happen, and you might not watch them actually take place, but everything building up to it, you are watching. And friend, I want to tell you, we have a front row seat to what God is doing. We're watching God put his word together. And I want to, as a believer, we should be more excited than we've ever been that Jesus is about to come. All oh, this worship 
war that is happening, the place of worship is disputed, uh, is pointing to the Savior. The Muslims said it is ours. Uh, the believers said it is ours. The Jews say it is ours. And I want to let you know something. It is a place where God, under this rock, is the pla- under this dome is the rock, uh, where there was a, a man by the name of Abraham took his son Isaac and laid him on an altar. Do you ever remember that? It was pointing to the coming Savior. It is the same vein of rock how, where there was a Savior who the Bible says to Abraham, God says to Abraham, there's going to be a lamb come. How, he's going to be a, He's going to be the one to take everybody's place. And that is Jesus himself. It is the same vein of rock where there's a place called Calvary. And it's always been a dispute over from Satan himself because Satan did not win at Calvary. He lost it all. By, amen. And I want to let you know there's a worship war. You can look it up and see what is happening in Jerusalem. I want you to take your Bibles now and go to the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter number 13. Revelation chapter number 13. You say, preacher, you're trying to scare me. I hope you get so scared you run to Jesus. You say, preacher, I want to let you know something. Uh, This bothers me. It should bother all of us. Uh, There's an anticipation that he's coming, but there's also that place in our life of fearfulness of the things that you face in life, the things that others are going to face, the things that people don't know Jesus are going to face. What if Jesus came right this very second and called all of us home? I want to let you know we will be rejoicing uh, in heaven, uh, but I want to let you know as a believer, your heart right now, I will be be in the place that there will be grief and there will be a burden because of those who don't know Jesus. It's not that a, as a believer, we're all standing over here saying, hey, I want you to know how we're, we're glad we're going and we're, we hate you can't come. I want to let you know everybody can come. Amen. There's a willingness. Look in Revelation chapter number 13. Revelation chapter number 13. The Bible says, We're thinking about and looking at what is happening. I want to let you in on a little subject about the book of Revelation. After chapter number three in the book of Revelation, the church, those who are believers, are not mentioned again on earth. So guess what? We're leaving. You say, well, preacher, I just don't know if I'm pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. Here's what you need to know. I know Jesus, and I'm going home one day. And so all that are are mid-trib or post-trib, you're going to be real surprised when you leave here before all that starts. Amen. I'll let you know, look in the book of Revelation, there's something that is taking place in Revelation chapter number 13. And verse, uh, verse, number, uh, verse number 17. I skipped over one. I'm going to back up to it if we have time. But hold on just a second. Let me, gra- let me grab this one right here. Revelation chapter number 13 and verse number 17. It says this. Look at it with me. And no man might buy or sell. Save that he had the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Can anybody tell me what that number is? The Bible says this is going to happen. Society says from 2020, we are ready for whatever you want to give us. You say, preacher, surely not. Absolutely. How many of you know in 2020, there was as much change quarters nickels dimes and pennies on earth as they were in 2019 but what happened you pull up to a you pull up to a burger joint if you could find one open go to the window order give them cash number one that flips everybody out 395 you give them $4. Anybody know how much supposed to come back? The sign said, we have a change shortage. No, you have a change storage. If they hold it back, it's not, I'm going to let y'all know something. You can look around. At, how many of you at stoplights? See a penny on the ground? Ever picked it up? Would you raise your hand? There ain't no shortage. It's exactly the same as it was. Where did it go? 
They made toilet paper out of it. (laughs) You look. He said, I want to let you know something. There's a willingness to receive whatever that has never been on the face of the earth before. We are doing it in the name of safety and others. You say, oh, that's compassionate. Absolutely. You say, preacher, you're talking about the vaccine. I have, I'm not even mentioning or talking about the vaccine. I'm talking about the readiness and the willingness of our society to do anything, anywhere, anytime and receive it. You know why? Because that is what our societies have been taught. Why have they been taught that? Because the Bible says these things are going to come to pass. These things are going to happen. You're going to receive, have to receive a mark to buy or to sell. You've got to receive a mark to buy or to sell. I don't know what is wrong with this thing, but I'm getting ready to chunk it. You've got to receive, you got to receive a mark. What is that mark? Did y'all know right now as we are in this building that there are people that have chips already in their bodies? Real simple. Insert it on the skin. You can walk in work. You check in. You check out. A cashless society. I've heard people say, I've said it before, I would never take the mark of the beast. Did you know you'll take it and not even know it? You say, oh, I'm, I, I'll tell you what, I, 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 remember this, I remember this conversation vividly. I was driving. I was about 18 years old. I was in a work van. I was driving beside uh, this man, and we were talking about the mark of the beast. We were talking about all that stuff. He said, I'm going to tell you what. He said, I don't care what they do. I will never receive it. My granny told me, I said, the only way you will not receive it is if you know Jesus as your Savior and Lord. Therefore, you will be gone. Other than that, you'll take it. You say, oh, preacher, there's no way. I want to ask you a question in here this morning. How many in this place have a debit or a charge card? If you got one, would you raise your hand? Did you know you already have everything you need to be locked into that system? How many of you feel like, this might just be me, but you feel like you slide your card in that little slot and it goes... It sucks everything out and says, this is who it is. And it goes, puts it back in your pocket. I have watched way too much sci-fi, had not I? <laughs> Can I let y'all in? It is not hard. How many of you in here have a cell phone? How many of you ever been talking about something and all of a sudden you get these advertisements? How many of you ever been thinking about something and got an advertisement? If you've ever done that, would you raise your hand? How does that happen? You didn't mention I want to tell you, friend. There's things going on that we better be encouraged about. Jesus is taking us home. It will be nothing for a society to say, okay, we'll do that. If I can put a chip in my child and my child never get lost, I could just look it up on the phone with this little chip and say, oh, man, Johnny's got a fever today. I better go pick him up. On my way. How many of you talk to your phone so to do stuff? If you do, would you raise your hand? Y'all are crazy. <laughs> How many of you used to talk to the TV and say, I wish that thing would change? Just try to... Now you can just say, Alexa, change my TV. I don't have all that, but when I said it, here she comes right now. She's coming to church with us, amen? You know what is happening? We are set up for a society to be controlled electronically very easily. He said it's going to be, and you look it up in Revelation, it's going to be a chip in their hand or their forehead. It's going to be a mark that it, we may not even be able to see that. When I was growing up, I thought everybody would have it tattooed real big on their head, 666. But did you know you probably will never even know who has it and who don't? But you will be known by what you can and cannot do. You go to the grocery store. You're going to buy some bread. At today's current price of $3.75 for four slices. You're going to walk through the line. You're going to have your little stuff to be able to survive for your family. Or try to give them a a little bit of food so you can hope they do not die within the next three days. You get to that countertop. They go through the motion. I started to say the cashier, they've done away with that. You go to the little machine, 
Blip, blip. Put your hand out. It, it, it registers your, your name. It, it knows how much you have in your account. So if you don't have one of those, what are you going to do? If you don't have that opportunity, what is going to happen? Would I do something like that to take care of my family? Well, in the last year we have heard you need to do this for your neighbors. You need to do this for your friends. You need to do this for all the people around you. We've had a whole new mindset that has happened. There is a, a willingness to receive we have had a reset in our world in the matter of just a few weeks' time. You say, Pastor, what is going on? It's easy. Revelation chapter number 13 and verse number 17. It is going to happen. But I want to let you know something. All these things are on the foundation of the Word of God. And right now we're watching it being set up to where tomorrow, if they pulled the trigger on it, it wouldn't even face people. I remember years ago, the cartoons I watched was Bugs Bunny and Elmer Fudd. If you ever watched them, would you say, praise the Lord? I mean, Sunday mor Saturday morning, there were some cartoons come on, and then there was wrestling. How many of you remember that? There you go. Y'all living, praise the Lord. Say, say, yeah, I'm living, amen. Then I watched as over time cartoons changed you say what in the world do you mean because they begin to do to put into place things that would change people's mindset all of a sudden you have somebody going down the street and they turn into something else or you have a horse that has a man's head on it even in commercials you say, what in the world is happening? It's conditioning for what is going to happen during the tribulation time. You say, preacher, you have done lost your mind. You can read about it in the book of Revelation. I want to let you know something. There's a willingness to receive what is about to happen after how Christians are taken out of this world. I want to let you know something. I am not going to be here. Let you know something. If you are a non-believer, you have never trusted Christ, and you know that Jesus died on a cross for you, that he died for your sins, he was buried and he rose again. The Bible says it like this. You say, well, I'm just going to hold on to that. My grandma said I can just hold on, and I'm not going to take the mark. The Bible says you will have a strong delusion, and you will believe a lie. Those who have never heard the gospel or do not know the gospel are the only ones after the church is gone that are going to have that opportunity. Do you know who Jesus is? I want to back up one slide if it will let me. If not, I'm not going to worry about it. But in the book of, Reve of, in the book of Daniel that we were in, the Bible says it like this. It says that, that wisdom is going to increase. People are going to get smarter as we go. We're living in one of the smartest societies we have ever had. Where people have an intelligence level that, is, that will blow your mind as far as book work, but they don't even know how to tie their shoes. There is a wisdom that is increased that is taking away what we know Y'all do realize we back in the woods a little bit, don't you? Amen? We know our world is going to have wisdom with no common sense. You say, what is happening? It is something from the past. Think about the wisdom that has increased and what has happened just over the last 150 years. How many of you enjoy flushing the toilet? Wasn't happening 150 years ago. How many of you enjoy walking in and flipping on a light switch? I want to tell you, I remember my grandpa, he said, boy, I sure like them good. They say them was the good old days. You know, going to the john outside when it was cold, checking for snakes when it was warm. Anybody ever been there before? Would you say amen? He said, you know, I like them. them some, they say them was the good old days. He said, but boy, I sure, at the time, all they had was pull strings in the house. He said, boy, I like to go in there and pull that string. What is happening, man? Now you can turn on the lights before you get in the house. 
Now you can do all kind of how, what is happening. Wisdom has increased. But as we do, we have lost the knowledge of the truth. The Bible says they're going to be ever learning and they're never able to come to the truth. The Bible said in the last days how that men are going to have all this wisdom, but their heart is going to fail. Have you ever looked at where we are as a society health-wise? I mean, we're smart. We know all these things. But health-wise, we are crumbling and crashing, and it is going to eventually consume uh, the budget of the United States of America. We are in a world that understands that wisdom is going to increase, that all these things are going to happen, that we're going to see these begin to take place. We are watching it taking place as we go. I'm going to give you just real quickly. I want to lead you through what the Bible says is going to take place again. Look with me as we, as we close this morning, this last one, in Matthew chapter number 24. Matthew chapter number 24 and verse number 12. <clears throat> We're going to close with this part this morning of watching what is happening in our society. Matthew chapter number 24, verse number 12. This is in the middle of the same place where Jesus, talking to his disciples, they said, Lord, what, when, when are you coming back? What, what is going to happen? When are you going to set up your kingdom? And that's whenever he began to tell them everything that is happening. Look in verse number 12. He said, and because iniquity shall abound. He said, because sinfulness is going to be so great. Because iniquity is going to be so great. Iniquity is chosen sin. The Bible lets us know that we have a nature of sin already. You are born with a sinful nature. We we are born a, a, a sinner. Uh, we, begin to, uh, we, we begin to do sinful. You don't have to teach somebody how to sin or how to do things that are opposite of what needs to be done. That is a sinful nature that we have. But he said, I want to let you know something, that iniquity is going to abound. That is chosen sin and chosen rebellion against what we know that we need to do. He said, so the, and because iniquity shall abound, here's what it's going to do in our life. The love of many shall wax cold wow verse number 37 look at it with me the bible says in verse number 37 he said but as the days of noah were so shall also the coming of the son of man be you can go back to genesis chapter number six we'll talk about that maybe a little later about what was going on in noah's day but it was a day of uncontrolled sin it was a day when sin was prevailing. It's the wickedness begins to rule our lives, our thoughts, and what we do in our lives. And here we understand sin, by the way, sin rules where Satan is followed. If we're following Satan, we're going to be living in sin. I want to let you know, as our world, and this is uh, just a little part of it, our world as we know it, there is Satan worship going on in astronomical amounts. Wicca is happening around our world, in our nation, where we live. You say, what is going on? People are allowing sin to rule our lives. We are, we are ruled by sin in our, uh, in, in, our, in our thought pattern, in the laws that are being made, in the things that are happening in our world. We are being ruled by sin. You say, how do you know that? Because here's what's going on. In the past year, in 2020, we have heard over and over announced how we need to care for others and make sure we do this so others can be safe. But when it comes to the word of sin, that is an offensive thing. You don't say that if they are doing something that is wrong and harming themselves. Our world's mentality has totally been changed by sin. Murder is at an all-time high in the world. Here we are in 2021, but in 2019, the murder level in Mexico hit an all-time high. The new normal that we have in our world uh, that has been changed over this last uh, several months is not just about the way we conduct things, but it is about accepting anything and all kind of sinfulness. Our world has been changed by the, by the driven desire for sin. We have become numb to others 
And then we defy our own conscience. 2019, one million. How many? Sexually transmitted diseases in the United States. One million per day diagnosed. Let me back that up just a minute. One million sexually transmitted diseases were diagnosed per day in the United States of America in 2019. So what are you saying? I'm saying we have unleashed sin in a way that it is consuming and diseasing our land. Have you ever heard about a little place called Jericho where the walls fell down? Would you raise your hand if you heard where the walls fell down? You know what was going on inside those walls? God said, I want to tell you something. He said, you're going to take it over. Don't touch anything. Don't take the garment. Don't take the gold. Don't take, don't take anything from Jericho. There was a reason why. Because they, the whole, the whole place of Jericho was a prostitute's playground. It was full of STDs, full of diseases. God said, don't touch anything in it or you will be bringing it into your life. Can I let you know something today, friend? Sin, when it rules the heart of man, will take us away from anything that God has given us. Violence has violence and sexual immorality has flooded every entertainment venue that we have. We're a world that is living on the emotion of sinfulness. Isaiah said in those last days, they're going to call good, they're going to call evil good, and they're going to call good evil. We're watching as our world is saying yes to sinfulness. As they come and begin to get ready for a time of invitation in our lives this morning personally and for others as we are here this morning. I want to read you chapter number 1, which is one chapter, verse number 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also shall look upon him whom they have pierced. And all kinds of the, all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. God says that in the book of Revelation, by the way. So if you was turning and looking in the book of Jude, you missed it. The eye doctor told me he's trying to trick my eyes. It ain't working. Revelation does not look like Jude. Back up to Jude, chapter number 1 and verse number 7. The Bible says it like this. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication. They're just doing whatever, whenever, with whoever. As long as it was a sin. And they were going after strange flesh. And are set forth for an example. Suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. He said likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. They despise dominion. They want no authority over them. And they speak evil of dignitaries. We just read the newspaper. We, numb, we become numb to ourselves and we defy our consciousness when sin is ruling. What will happen? The Bible said all these things are going to come to pass. You know what I just did this morning? You can go back and you can read the headline of almost every news article. And you'll find these things are happening right now, 2021. They're taking place. I want to ask you this morning personally, are you ready? If Jesus came this morning, are you ready? If Jesus, if the trumpet sounded right now, are you ready? You say, preacher, I'll be left behind. I want to let you know something. Without a personal relationship with Jesus, friend, you'd be lost and left behind. You say, "How how do I even know? Well, here's what we need to know. The Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Do I know I've sinned against God? In that sin, the Bible says that Jesus became sin for us. Who knew no sin? He took all of our sin on a cross and he died for the sins of the whole world. Your sins, my sins. And the Bible says in that they buried his body but on the third day he arose. And here's how he said that you and I know him. 
He said that if we believe and know that Jesus died for our sins, was buried and rose again, he said, for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. If you have never done that in your life, friend, you're not ready for Jesus to come. You say, I, I, I'm not sure that I know Christ as my Savior. I want to let you know something. You can today. Listen, let him in your life today. Are you ready for the rapture? Are you ready for the calling away? Are you ready for Jesus to come? I want to ask you, also as a believer, you say, I'm, I'm, I've been ready. I've trusted Jesus my Savior, but I'm not living where I need to live. Friend, here's what the Bible says and lets us know. Hey, he, he tells us we need to be ready and right with him. Listen, living a life of hope and grace and peace because he's coming. You say this morning, Pastor, in my life, I, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to all these things. I can see them unfolding. I'm even going back in my mind hearing news uh, on the news or articles that, are, that I've read and all these things that are taking place around us. And there's people in my life that if today it was over, they'd be left behind. Friend, I want to tell you, there's only one hope. And that is you and I as a believer sharing Jesus with them and letting them know the urgency of what is about to happen. It's going to happen. It is going to take place. This morning, you say, Pastor, I need to come. Listen, I want to ask you right now, listen, as we stand together all over this building, you say, Pastor, I just need to come this morning. I need to pray for somebody. God is speaking to my heart about them. You say, this morning, Pastor, I need to come myself. There's things I need to, I, I need to, I need to talk to the Lord about in my personal life. Hey, don't wait. I will come. What if Jesus came right this minute? Listen, are you ready? You say, I need to come this morning. Would you let God work in your life? There's somebody I need to pray for. There's somebody, listen, today, if you don't know Jesus, hey, I would not leave this building without knowing Jesus. I wouldn't leave if I didn't know him. I would make sure I knew Jesus in the safe haven of his love and his grace. It's been read about and sung about. Father, we love you. God, I pray you would help us, Lord, to follow you and allow you, God, to speak your word into us. Lord, we are here, God, this morning, Lord, to respond to you, how you have taught, taught us in your word. God, as we've watched and went through the scriptures this morning, God, you are, you are boldly telling us, here is what is going to take place. God, help us not to miss it. God, help us not to allow it to go by. But Lord, help us, oh God, Lord, to give ourselves to what you are doing right now. God, not to be fearful, God, to be faithful. Father, you know, God, we give you praise. Hallelujah. With heads bowed and eyes closed this morning, say, Pastor, I need to come. Listen, would you come? What about that person, that friend, that family member that you have? That right now, if Jesus came or they died, they're not ready to meet him. You say, I got a husband, a wife, a spouse, a friend, somebody in my life. I have, I have a, a, a grandmother, a grandfather, somebody in your life that don't know Jesus. Is God speaking to you about that person? Or are we so caught up in the world and so caught up in things in our life that we can't even hear God speak to us about others? That word lets us know that sin blinds us. The things that happen in this world, it blinds us to what is happening. So I need to come pray for that person this morning. Listen, would you come while these are coming? You say, Pastor, this morning, as a believer, I need to come this morning. I need God to do something in my life this morning. I need God to help me in my life this morning as a believer. There's things in my life shouldn't be in my life. And I need God to help me. I need God to speak to me. I need God to work in me and on me and through me. I am here. God, use me, Lord. I want to be your vessel. Say so this morning, Pastor, in my life right now, if I died today or this was over or the scripture that you just talked about, uh, right now it was happening, I would be left behind. Friend, I want to tell you, today would be the day to say, yes, Jesus, I need you. Yes, Jesus, I want you to come in my life. You said this morning, I need to ask Christ in my life. Would you just slip your hand up? I'm not ready to meet Jesus. Just pray for me. If I, if I die today, I'm really not ready to meet the Lord. Pray for me. Would you just slip your hand up? Let God speak to your heart. Thank you. Thank you for being honest with God. Listen, don't let a day go by without knowing Jesus. You said this morning, Pastor, I know I know Jesus in my life, and, but I, I'm, not, I'm not where I need to be with him. There's things in my life that should not be in my life. But I, I want to get right with the Lord in my life. Pray for me. Would you just slip your hand up? I need God to help me in my life. God bless your hearts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being obedient to the Lord this morning. Say, Pastor, in my life right now, there's people around me. There's friends. There's family members in my life. And right now, they don't know Jesus. I want you to help me pray for them. I just want to lift my hand up as a prayer object to the Lord. God, I want them to know you. Lord, help me to be a vessel. Oh, God. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, you'd open their eyes. Open their hearts, God, to come to you. Father, we praise you this morning for the Word of God. Lord, our foundation is not on what's happening on the news. Our foundation is not is what's happening around the world. God, our foundation is what your Word says. 
God, this morning we're looking to your word, and through your word we understand the things that you have done already in preparation for the day you're going to call your church home, call your people home, and God, what is going to happen in this world. You have already laid all those foundations in your word. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus for people in this building, people who are watching, God, people outside, Lord, wherever they may be. God, right now, if they do not know you as Savior and Lord, this will be the hour. God, this will be the day they will trust in you and they'll be born again. God, they'll receive your word even right now, Lord, and come to you and know you as Savior and Lord of their lives. God, you have a purpose and you have a plan today. Father, I praise you, God, that you love us so much that you said if you'll call upon me, I'll save you, I'll forgive you, I'll give you life. Father, I pray with those right now, God, in our lives. Lord, help us to be right and ready uh, to, to lead this old world. Father, help us, oh God, in our lives to allow things that Satan bring in our life. God, to allow things that are happening around us not to keep our focus uh, from who you are and what you can do in our life. That you can give us peace, that you can give us power. Lord, that you can establish our life in your grace, Lord. And God, you can prepare our hearts and reveal our lives. Uh, God, you can, you can even, as David said, God, that you're able to heal our soul. God, I pray in the name of Jesus right now, Lord, that your church would arise like we have never risen before. Father, we pray for our friends, our loved ones, those around us, God, that you have put in our lives. Lord, you put us in people's path every single day. God, I pray, Lord, you would help us to be a witness to them, help us to be a light to them, God, help us to shine bright and help us to let the love of Jesus flow through us that people can come to know you as Savior and Lord of their lives, God. I want to praise you for what you're doing. God, thank you, Jesus for the hope you give us. Thank you for the peace you give us of knowing you're coming again. Lord, lead us, guide us, and direct us, Lord. Help us to be obedient to you in everything that we do, God. That the love of Jesus might shine through our hearts. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Friend, I want to remind you today, Jesus is coming, amen. I want to let you know, he let us know some things that will happen before he comes. He said, here they are. He laid them out in the Word. Friend, I want to tell you, he's coming. Amen. If you're ready for his coming, would you say amen? He's coming. Praise the Lord. Let's tell people about him. Let's worship him, honor him, and give him glory this morning. Thank God for his blessings. Tell somebody about Jesus. Listen, I want to encourage you. Uh, some, of our, uh, some of our Bible uh, students, if you'll go to the back and pick up some of those pamphlets, uh, please take one. Take them to somebody if they need to know uh, the Lord. or uh, go to. It don't matter what church they go to. It don't, it don't matter what kind of religion they are. Uh, we need to learn the Word. When you get in the Word, the Word of God will help you. Amen. And feed your life. So please. Uh, pick those up. Uh, we're going to pray right quick for all of our youth uh, that are uh, getting ready to leave in the morning. And uh, uh, we want to pray for them. And I want to tell all of you, I love you. Thank you for being in the Word this morning. It's the Word of God that will fix our lives. Amen. And help our world. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. God, we give you thanksgiving for what you're doing right now, God, in our lives. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. God, that you have blessed every single one of these needs. Lord, I pray for all of our youth as they travel, God. You bless them. God, I pray for Brother Mark. God, you bless him. And God, give him uh, leadership and wisdom, Lord, with our youth. And Father, uh, God, we pray for protection around them uh, as they travel. God, most of all, we ask you, Lord, to do a work in their heart that they will never, ever, 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 never get over. God, I pray you would just fill their lives with your presence and your power. God, bless Brother CT, God, as he uh, leads the meeting and all those who are preaching or singing. And God, we pray for a fresh anointing in them. God, we just ask you right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you be lifted up. God, thank you for what you're doing. Lord, lead us, guide us, and direct us. Lord, help us to honor you and look for your coming every single day. We give you praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. Turn around. Let somebody know you're just glad to see them today in the house of the Lord. I love you in the Lord. Also, pick up outside. Pick up some of those uh, welcome, uh, welcome cards, invite cards. Share them with somebody. Bring them to the house of the Lord. We love you in the Lord. Hallelujah.